or speaking to that deserves no words? What are you breathing life into that you should be starving? And where are you set up where God has called you to be set apart? I'll say it again. What are you speaking to that deserves no words? What are you breathing life into that you should be starving? And where are you set up where God has called you to be set apart? Brace yourselves. Okay? You know, brace yourselves for what I'm about to say next. Number three is, don't let your ego disrupt your execution. Don't let your ego disrupt your execution. See, especially when you're doing the, doing the Lord's work. You know, so sometimes you think, well, things aren't really working for me, Pastor Ray. Then one thing you have to remember is we have to remember our commitment. See, that, that, that yes that you got came with some very clear expectations. What do you want, Nehemiah? How long will you be gone? When will you get back? So he answered that before he was even presented with the challenges that he was going to have. So his name was on the line, his integrity was on the line for something that he didn't even know was down, that was down the line. So you're telling me, you see, he couldn't go back to the king and say, King, well, I know I, I told you at first that I would have it done by this time, but King, you want to send Sam Ballard and Tobiah, all these issues that I have, not only that I have issues with them externally, but internally, we have to stop everything that we're doing. He, he couldn't do that. His word was his word. He continued to go forward in what God had called him to do. So what do you need? I'll give you an example. I was in preparation for this big event that we have coming up, and there was um, a large ministry that I, that I, was, I was hoping to partner with. And we're talking about, I'm just, this is me being, being, being transparent. I, I haven't walked through this. So everything I'm telling you is something that I actually walked through. Not always past, but that I walked through. And so this organization, they look at me and they say, well, you haven't even been in an organization for two years. And your church doesn't even have 150 people. So I don't really think that this is the type of organization that we will partner with this year. Come back next year. I'm not going to lie, I was like deep in my fields when I, when I heard that, right? I, and I wanted to have my laundry list of all the great things that we had to do, then I had to realize that, you know, I, I'm, this is not the approval that I need, and, and who's for me will be for me. God will, 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 will reveal that. So I was working through that. Working through that. And working through it some more. Because everything that I wanted to say, I realized that I would have to come down out of my place in order to say it. You said you gave this to me. Lord, you put this vision on my, on my heart. Lord, Lord if, if, they know, if he doesn't want to do this some way, the Lord said, do you trust me or do you not? Because for every no, there's a yes somewhere right around the corner. Matter of fact, when I come to feel we realize that that, that that one no turned into about 15 yeses. Yeah. Yeah. Where I would have had that, and everyone's like, well, they don't need any help because they're partnering with this organization now. I have to work on that. As many times I go through life, and sometimes I have to adjust my crown. I'm like, okay, God, I understand. But one thing you realize when I talk about learning how to shut up, and I know I'm, I, I, know I'm saying, I apologize for those if that word offends you, but I'm learning how to shut up. Um, But the thing is, realize that you didn't no response. So what did they do? No response. You hear that? No, I don't hear anything. But it's like they still hear something. And I realize that the wobble is speaking for you. See, Nehemiah was doing what he was supposed to do. Yes. And it was the assignment that he had in his life. Yes. And now the wall is speaking for him. So they had an issue with Nehemiah, but it wasn't necessarily Nehemiah, it was the, what the wall represented. So Nehemiah was keeping his mouth shut, but the wall was screaming so loud. What are you saying, Pastor Ray? I'm saying you learn to shut up and watch your passion speak for you. Watch your purpose speak for you. Watch the Lord speak up on your behalf. I don't have to say a word. I just have to be faithful to what God has called me to do. What he's called, what he's called me to be. Say, you hear do you hear that? I'm not saying anything. 
that's the Lord speaking for me. But, but, it, but it's so loud, I, I can't help it. I'm just being obedient. I have my sword in one hand and my hammer in the other. Continue to go forward and keep plowing. Saying, but I, but I, I'm hearing so much noise. God's saying, that's the purpose. That's the passion. That's the plan that I have all along. If I can just get you to get out the way and learn to shut your mouth and realize that me fight on your behalf, that I will scream louder through the things that I'm doing with you, then you can scream loud in your own voice. You get behind something great. That will speak for you. Speak for you. Not a mumbling word. So, you know, okay, pilot. That's what you think. And say, you're the king of the Jews. Whatever you say. No comment. Oppressed. Afflicted. No comment. If you learn to take care of your character, God will take care of your reputation. That your character is in your control. What people say about you is completely outside of your control. I, I'm saying this and I am still working through this because there's some wrongs that I've done and I try to go back and I fix them. You know, whether I go back and I apologize and I go back and repent. And sometimes people still don't want to hear that. And I realize, well, God, I have to go forward and continue to get things right now. I didn't always get things right, but I can take care of my character, walking with integrity, walking in love. And what a byproduct of me walking with, and with character is God will take care of my reputation. So take care of your character. And God will take care of your reputation. So when Nehemiah's enemies couldn't distract him through opportunities or through crit criticism, they appealed to his fear. They sent an a, a unsealed letter. Now we talked about that last week. What was the purpose of the unsealed letter? Because an unsealed letter is completely uncommon. The unsealed letter was, it was Sam Valley having the pettiest of petty moments that he could have. That means that everyone who touched the letter had the opportunity to read it. That's the reason why it was unsealed and it was uncommon. That's the reason why they mentioned it because they never had those instances of people sending unsealed letters. You send an unsealed letter because you want to make sure that the scheme is through. You want to make sure that it works and that everyone along the way can read it and see what it says. So he told him he's going to tell the king. Why, why is that important? Because if you look back at Nehemiah 2, verse 2, it says, So the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad And we, when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. And he goes on to say, I was very much afraid. That's in Nehemiah 2, 2. I was very much afraid. The enemy will try to use what you're scared of to distract you or to delay he was already, he was afraid of the king. He started off being afraid of the king because he knew what he was asking, asking to do. And Sam Bell, that's, that's why the enemy does. The enemy tries to find your, your weakest area of insecurity, of insignificance, and saying, that's what I'm going to use. He says, I was very much afraid. So he was all, so he started off saying that, okay, God, I know what you're asking me to do, but God, I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling with this because God, if I could just be honest, I'm afraid of what this means. And that's what the enemy will use. The enemy has stifled so many people because of fear that it's unbelievable. Uh, Dr. Lee preaches a while ago. She said, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Sometimes I hear messages like this and it just resonates in my spirit. Because I realize that, and I, I know many, I, I, I'm out there. Like, I, I, I those who, who hang out with me close, y'all know that I'm out there, always dreaming, you know, and then thinking about different different ideas. I know sometimes I get on my wife's nerves because uh, she just knows that I, I get on her nerves sometimes. Because I'm always out there, strategizing. I say, okay, well, hey, we got this event going on. We get, you know, guess what we're doing next year? She said, no, please don't talk to me about any year go next year, you know. But what, 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 what am I saying? It's very important that you know that the enemy will use those tactics. Okay, he's very much afraid. Well, what will people say about me? Well, I feel like I'm not qualified. But, well, what if I actually fail? But once again, Nehemiah resisted this distraction. And Nehemiah flatly refused to be distracted by fear. I want to tell you something really, really honest. Every vision contains an element of fear. Pause with that right there. Every vision contains 
an element of fear because it's so easy to doubt ourselves, our abilities, our safety, and the risk that we are taking. And there are often people who will pinpoint the risk that we're taking and why, you know, and why it's not a reasonable risk to take. You should not um, be oblivious to those risks because it's very important. We should always try to seek wise counsel. However, you must realize that your race is not someone else's race. Yes. You realize that your measure of faith is not necessarily their measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And that their grace is not your grace. And their expectation is not your expectation. And so why is it good sometimes to seek counsel? And I seek counsel. And people say, well, well, give me your thoughts. But ultimately, I know at the end of the day, I have to be true with what God has called me to do. Amen. To give me the strength to finish. But don't tell me what I can't do. Because you refuse to believe it for yourself. Or because you've never seen it done. This entire year has been a year of no excuses. The prophets came and said, you know, we're going to be game changers. Dr. Lee's been preaching some phenomenal words. You see the, the declaration Pastor Raymond has been talking about. And I've just chosen to put my faith out there to truly believe that I could be a game changer. I put my faith out there to say that I truly believe that I could change the world. I truly, I, I believe that God will continue to, to give me the, the, the creative ability to continue to walk in what he has empowered me to do for his glory, to make a difference. So don't tell me just because you can't believe that for yourself that I need to slow down. Could it be that the blessing that you're missing is in your, your inability to keep up or to sow into the vision that we have going on? You say, God, do something great in my life. When there's greatness all around you, why have you not tapped into that? Pause. That's the challenge. What if God has called you to do? What has God called you to be? If you can't believe for yourself just because you've never seen it done, don't tell me what I can't believe, what I can't do. And I'm reminded of phrases that, are, that are, are repeated in the Bible over and over again when it comes down to fear. And this morning when I was walking out my door and, and headed to, to my car to go, you know, to, go uh, to the juvenile jail, I'm reminded right there, and for those who've been in my house, you know you've seen it, right above my door. Every single day before I leave my house is a huge sign that says, it's Joshua 1.9. You say, what is Joshua 1.9? It says, I command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I said, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I wonder why I feel the way that I feel because I say it every time I walk out the house. I'm walking underneath it. I'm walking in it. It's all the way around me. It's right there in my face. I can't forget it. So anytime that I want to be discouraged, anytime I want to be afraid, I look at that sign and say, you have to be courageous. Because not why? Not because of your own strength or because of how good you are. Because I am with you wherever you go. That's why we have the strength to finish. Because, Lord, you're with me. You're saying, okay, Pastor Ray, that's a great scripture. Thank you. It's one of my favorites. That's why I have it on my wall. But also 2 Timothy 2, 7. I know y'all know this. For God has not given me the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. Whenever I'm mentoring people or, I'm, or I'm discipling people, I start with a few scriptures for them to kind of be able to get their hands around, right? So if they can start grasping some of these scriptures where, you know what, I, I don't have to walk in the spirit of fear, but of love, but of power, and a sound mind. So you know what, you just work on that scripture. You say that over and over and over again because once you get that, then we start talking about being strong and courageous. We talk about being the head and not the tail. It starts to make sense because you believe it. Yeah. And every time, you get a little bit stronger. Your fear subsides just a little bit. The key is don't just get distracted. Don't let opportunities or criticism or your fear derail the pursuit of God's vision. You have to keep your eyes focused on the finish line. Why? So Nehemiah 6, 9 says they were all trying to to frighten us. We're talking about that, that unsealed letter. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed. I'm 
strength in my hands. Yes, yes. Yes. I, I, told, I caught the Holy Ghost this morning when I, when I was going over this message. Because I thought about everything. God, why, why? He's already been through so much. Why is he just now he's saying that it's strength in my hands? And God said, the reason why he's saying it now, because it's sometimes it's easy for us to start, but it's hard for us to finish. And that, if anyone who's ever started something that's not followed through, that's what he's saying, God, I need you to strengthen my hands. Because I've gotten this far, and it's been because of you, but God, I need my hands to be stronger so I can finish. Finish what I started. Say, now, strengthen my hands. Nehemiah 4, 4 says, Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder to the land of captivity. He has to strengthen his hands so that way he can deal with the doubts. Yes, strengthen my hands, God, to deal with the discouragement. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 10 says, Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out, and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Now strengthen my hands, God. There may have been some doubts. There may have been some discouragements. But that will not stop us. I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The weapon may form, but it can't prosper. Why? Because my hands are strong. God, I need you to strengthen my hands so that I can finish what I started. Finish this work that you have for me. Strengthen my hands. It wasn't about me when I started. It's not going to be about me now. It didn't come, I didn't come here to make a name for myself. I came here to do something that is important for you. I didn't come here to be impressive. It's not about what's popular. It's about me living out my purpose. I'm not coming down. I'm not backing off. I'm not losing focus. I'm not throwing in a towel. I need my hands strong because I'm doing a great work. And I've come this far. I've come way too far to throw in a towel now. What am I saying? Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11 says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. What are you saying? You prayed for this. You prayed for success. Your hands have to be strong because you say, God, at the very beginning, at the very beginning, I prayed for success. I didn't say I want to stop halfway. I want to go all the way, God. I Why? Because Philippians 1.6 says, being confident in this, that he who 